the object now known as the Buga Sphere has become the center of a growing mystery. On March 17, 2025, a metallic sphere tore through the sky over Buga, Colombia and slammed into a farmer's field. The object should have been a mangled wreck. Instead, investigators found a perfect, flawless orb. No seams, no joints, just smooth alien metal covered in symbols that made linguists take a step back and shake their heads. For months, it sat in a lab, a perfect enigma. But when a team of desperate scientists fed those symbols into a quantum AI, something impossible happened. Uh, and this, we think, is the antenna. With this, they are able to broadcast uh, send orders or receive orders. The computer didn't just translate a language, it unlocked the source code for reality itself. And deep within that code was a revelation so profound, it forced an immediate total shutdown. Columbia's unearthly visitor. You see, the problem started the moment investigators arrived. The sphere was resting in a 30-foot circle of completely dead grass. Not burned, not flattened, desiccated. Every plant, every insect, every microbe in that circle had every drop of moisture pulled from its cells. It was a zone of absolute dryness, and at its center sat a 12-inch orb of metal that had no business existing. X-rays confirmed what the eye could see. It was perfect. No welds, no seams. It was as if it had been willed into existence rather than built. But the scans revealed something even weirder. Inside the outer shell were two more shells, nested perfectly like Russian dolls. Between these layers floated nine tiny microspheres, held in place by no visible force. And at the very core, a microscopic chip that defied every analysis. The material was 95% aluminum, but the other 5% was an alloy that matched nothing on Earth. But here's the thing that started to make the scientists really uncomfortable, the weight. On day one, it weighed 16 pounds. A week later, they measured it again on a different calibrated scale. It was 20 pounds. Two weeks later, it was 22 pounds. Mass was appearing from nowhere, violating the most fundamental laws of conservation. It was gaining weight without taking anything in. To put it mildly, this wasn't just a strange meteorite. It was a physics problem sitting in a box. And then there were the symbols. They weren't carved or etched. They were part of the metal itself, flowing across the surface in patterns that felt both random and intelligent. The world's best linguists and code breakers worked on it for months. They found nothing. No alphabet, no mathematical sequence, no language. It was gibberish. The project hit a dead end. The sphere was an absolute impenetrable mystery. That is, until one junior researcher at MIT made a suggestion that sounded like science fiction. What if we stop trying to read it? What if we let something else try? Humans couldn't crack the code, so they handed it to a mind that wasn't human at all. Translating the universe. Now get this, a normal computer thinks in ones and zeros. Yes or no, on or off. A quantum computer is completely different. It thinks in possibilities. Its basic units, called qubits, can be a one, a zero, both, and everything in between all at the same time. It's the difference between picking up one grain of sand at a time to find a specific one and becoming the entire beach at once to instantly know where it is. It doesn't calculate an answer. It lets all possibilities collapse into the correct answer. Researchers linked Google's Sycamore quantum processor with IBM's Condor system creating one of the most powerful computational networks on the planet. They digitized the sphere's strange symbols and fed them into the quantum cloud. For weeks, classical supercomputers had found nothing. The quantum AI took three hours. At 3 a.m. on a Tuesday, the patterns emerged. The real kicker is, they weren't a language, they were numbers. The first sequence the AI decoded was Planck's constant, the smallest possible unit of action in the universe, accurate to 15 decimal places. That's more precise than our own best measurements. Then came another, the fine structure constant, the number that governs the strength of electromagnetic force and literally holds our atoms together. Then another and another, the speed of light, the gravitational constant, the golden ratio, nature's favorite number, which shapes everything from galaxies to the DNA in your cells. The sphere wasn't speaking in words, 
It was speaking in the language of physics itself. It was as if someone had written down the user manual for the universe. Imagine finding a rock and carved into it are the exact values for gravity and the speed of light. It's impossible. But there it was, spitting out of a multi-million dollar quantum computer in the middle of the night. The team was stunned. Whoever built this sphere didn't just understand physics, they knew the universe's settings better than we do. But the universal constants were just the appetizer. The next layer of code was far more terrifying, listening to the stars. After mapping the fundamental constants, the AI moved to the second layer of symbols. And what it found sent a chill through the entire research lab. The patterns weren't numbers anymore, they were frequencies, resonant signatures. The AI displayed them as waveforms and the scientists stared in disbelief. They had seen these exact patterns before. In 2015, the LIGO experiment detected gravitational waves for the first time, ripples in space-time created by two black holes colliding over a billion years ago. It was a sound without sound, the whisper of the cosmos. The frequencies carved into the bugosphere were an identical match. Not similar, identical. It contained the echo of black holes that merged long before our planet even formed. But it didn't stop there. The third layer of symbols resolved into orbital resonances. It showed the perfect mathematical harmony of Jupiter's moons. It mapped the gravitational music that creates the gaps in Saturn's rings. It even contained the exact orbital ratios of exoplanets we only discovered last year with the Webb telescope. It was a symphony of our solar system and beyond, all stored in a 12-inch ball. Dr. Sarah Chin, a theoretical physicist from Caltech, brought in to consult, put it bluntly. She said, if you wanted to store the operating system of space-time, this is how you would do it. Think about that. Not a message, not a history lesson. The actual source code of existence, the mathematical architecture that makes reality work, compressed into symbols on a metal sphere. We build computers that process information, this sphere might just be information, pure math made physical. This wasn't technology anymore. This was approaching something else entirely. The simulations were even worse. When the AI modeled how the nested shells and microspheres would react to these frequencies, the sphere didn't act like a passive object. It became a cosmic tuning fork. The model showed that if you broadcast the right frequency at it, it would generate a tiny, localized distortion in space-time. That should not be possible. The sphere wasn't just describing the universe, the symbols were pointing to a specific address. The return address. The final breakthrough, the one that triggered the shutdown, came from an astrophysicist named Dr. Lisa Park. She had a wild idea. Everyone was trying to read the symbols as data. What if they weren't data? What if they were a map? She stopped looking at them as physics and started looking at them as positions. She overlaid the glyph patterns onto deep space star charts. The match was instantaneous and terrifying. Three of the longest symbol sequences lined up perfectly with the sources of the most powerful fast radio bursts ever detected. These are mysterious millisecond long blasts of energy from deep space and we have no idea what causes them. The sphere had their precise coordinates, but it was the last set of coordinates that made everyone's blood run cold. It pointed to a location between the Andromeda and Triangulum galaxies. A patch of sky our best telescopes show is complete, empty blackness. There's nothing there. But the quantum AI analyzing the sphere's data insisted there was. It suggested the sphere wasn't just storing known data, but was pointing to an origin, a source. Think about what we did with the Voyager Golden Record. We launched a probe into space carrying pictures, music, and a map showing aliens how to find Earth. We wrote our return address on it and sent it out into the cosmos. What many overlook is, what if this sphere is the same thing, but for a civilization so advanced they don't use radio waves? What if they send physical objects encoded with the laws of physics and a map home? A message in a bottle with a return address written in the language of gravitational waves and pulsars. That was it. That was the moment. The implications were too massive. A potential address for an unknown, unseen intelligence with a mastery of physics bordering on the divine. The potential for a technology that could manipulate space-time. 
the realization that this wasn't a random artifact. It was a marker, a signpost, maybe even an invitation. The project leaders made the call. The AI was shut down. The results were classified. The official story became an inconclusive analysis. But just as they pinpointed a location in the stars, a rumor surfaced that suggested we weren't the only ones who received the message. Humanity's Turning Point The whispers started on secure forums for collectors of exotic artifacts. In July of 2025, a private auction house in Tokyo allegedly cataloged a second sphere. This one was smaller, only 8 inches across. It had different symbols, but it was made of the same impossible seamless metal with nested shells inside. The anonymous collector who bought it won't go public, but leaked photos show the same mind-bending design. Here's why this changes everything. One sphere is an anomaly. Two spheres is a pattern. It means they weren't just dropped by accident. It suggests they were placed deliberately for us to find. And if there are two, there are probably more scattered across the globe like a cosmic scavenger hunt. Suddenly, the question isn't just what is this thing, it's what do they contain? The knowledge locked inside these spheres could jumpstart human civilization by a thousand years. Dr. Chin from Caltech believes they might hold the answers to the biggest holes in our physics. Dark matter, dark energy, a unified theory of everything. Unlocking just 10% of that could mean energy grids that pull power from the quantum vacuum, propulsion drives that bend space instead of burning fuel. It sounds like a fantasy, but the math is right there on the sphere's surface, more precise than anything we've ever measured. This is why the scientific community is moving so carefully and why they're so terrified. The potential is world-changing, but we're like a tribe from the Stone Age that just found a working nuclear reactor. We can see that it's powerful, but we have no idea how it works, and we're just as likely to destroy ourselves with it as we are to harness it. The Bugosphere isn't just some mystery in a field anymore. It's a test. So now that you know what they know, what does this all mean for you, for all of us? Let's step back and look at what we're really dealing with here. A metal sphere crashes in Colombia, constructed in a way we can't replicate. It impossibly gains mass. It's covered in symbols that are not a language, but the mathematical constants that glue the universe together. A quantum AI decodes them and reveals they also contain the sounds of colliding black holes and a star map pointing to a place that should be empty. And now a second sphere has reportedly surfaced in Japan. So where does that leave us? Did this all happen overnight? It feels like it, but the University of Georgia was able to analyze carbonized resin from the crash site. That resin was dated at 12,560 years old. This thing may have been here for a very long time, waiting. Is it true? The facts of the object, its construction, its weight gain, its strange effects, are being verified by independent labs as we speak. The AI's findings, however, are locked down tight. What key details are we still missing? We don't know what the tiny chip at its core is. We don't know why it was activated now. And most importantly, the quantum computer gave us the what, the constants, the coordinates, but it couldn't tell us the why. This discovery is not like learning to split the atom. This is like finding the universe's source code. When humanity unlocked nuclear power, we wrestled with a terrible duality, the potential for clean, limitless energy alongside the specter of absolute annihilation. We chose to build a bomb. This new knowledge presents a far more profound dilemma. This feels less like the Manhattan Project and more like finding the monolith from 2001, a space odyssey buried in our own backyard. It is an artifact so far beyond our comprehension that its very existence rewrites every rule. We have been handed the operating system for reality from a hyper-advanced intelligence, but the user manual is nowhere in sight. Why Earth? Why now? Is it a gift? A tool to elevate us and solve the unsolvable? Is it a warning, a glimpse of powers we were never meant to wield? Or is it a beacon and by decoding it, did we just turn it on, announcing our fledgling civilization to the cosmos? We are standing on the edge of the single greatest discovery in human history or the most elaborate, terrifying mystery ever conceived. The universe just handed us a puzzle box and its secrets could be Pandora's. The question is no longer if we can solve it. Our own relentless curiosity ensures we will try.
The real question is whether we're ready for the answer. Is this a gift to elevate humanity or is it a Trojan horse? Hit like and subscribe if you want more secrets revealed.